Hey guys, it's Lachlan from Lachlan Likes A Thing here. I thought I would do something a little different in this video, uh, and hopefully you'll find this interesting, but I wanted to make this video in response to a YouTube comment I recently got on one of my videos uh, that was basically to the effect that I was not a true audiophile, I was disqualified from being uh, anyone who knows anything about anything because I listen to MP3 or AAC lossy file formats on my iPhone while I use my headphones on the go. And I found this comment objectionable for a number of reasons. The first reason is that I, I don't like the phrase audiophile. I mean, I, I think it's a bit of an elitist phrase because it kind of suggests that you're part of this fancy club of people who like sound. And you know, honestly, everyone likes music and they like sound. And if there was any fancy club that I kind of belong to, it was the fancy club of crazy people who spend, you know, far too much money on gadgets because, you know, they're giant geeks or, or whatever. And, and I'll confess, I love headphones because I think they're kind of really awesome. You know, I think they're really awesome kind of pieces of technology and I like them for aesthetic reasons. And, you know, they kind of uh, really interest me that way. And so I'm a headphone enthusiast and I'll describe myself as that. But the second reason I, you know, found that phrase, that idea that MP3 files are garbage, I found that objectionable, was that we have a big debate in, in kind of, you know, head file, audio file circles about whether or not lossless or lossy files actually sound any different. And my standard uh, response to that question, whenever I'm asked, is that in normal listening conditions, in normal kind of listening conditions, uh, when you have uh, environmental noise, when you have uh, kind of background noise and you have, you know, distortion introduced by equipment, etc., etc., you're not going to hear much, if any, difference. You know, you're not going to hear much, if any, difference because of those various factors. But I've never actually put my money where my mouth is and actually tested this assertion. And I think it's kind of important because it's a question that does come up a lot. You know, not just when we talk about lossy or lossless files, but when we talk about things like 96 kilohertz audio or 24 bit audio or direct stream digital or, or cables or that kind of thing. Um, it's really important for us to have a method that we can actually ascertain or distinguish the differences between different kind of sources or different kind of file formats uh, without just kind of mouthing off about it as the original YouTube commenter did. So I thought I would make a series of videos that would do that, that would actually not only tell you about the differences between lossless and lossy files, but also give you a way, uh, you know, explain to you how you can actually test these differences for yourself using a method called ABX testing. And I wanted to make this video in two parts. So this first part is just an overview of the differences between lossless and lossy files. And then the second video was going to be a demonstration of ABX testing as a method. So hopefully you'll find this interesting and you can share this video with your friends whenever this topic comes up, uh, depending on how interesting conversations you have about lossy versus lossless audio files. But anyway, let's get right into it. When we talk about uh, lossy or lossless files, what do we actually mean? Well, simply put, a lossless compression method is, is a method where you're trying to represent a piece of data. Like say, you know, you're trying to represent uh, a piece of music. So like basically sound waves, or you're trying to represent uh, a picture or something like that. You're trying to represent something, but you want to represent it, the same information in a kind of smaller file, uh, without losing any of the original information. And we do this by taking the same information and storing it more efficiently. So to give you a really, really, you know, roll your own kind of basic example of a lossless uh, compression algorithm if we can call it that. Let's say someone gave you a stream of letters and you wanted to store that more efficiently. So we have AAA, BB, AAA. So we could store this as 4A, 
because there are four A's, two B's, and two A's. Now, we've ended up with a, with a phrase that's actually shorter than the original. Now, of course, there's gonna be more overhead for whoever's reading this code because they had to figure out, or they had to know that four refers to the number of A's and two refers to the number of B's and so on and so forth. So there's more overhead on the decoding side of things. But the thing is, once you decode this information, you get the original information. You haven't lost any information. You still have the original uh, code, you know, with the four A's and the two B's and the two A's. So that's lossless compression. And, you know, when we have a thing like uh, ALAC or FLAC, which are two uh, very popular uh, lossless file formats, we can think of them the same way we might think about uh, zip or .rar files. They're basically uh, compression files where we're basically packing the same amount of information into a smaller box. And when you unzip a zip file, when you unzip a RAR file, you don't lose information, you get the same program, you don't end up with a corrupt program. So that's lossless compression. Now, what is lossy compression? So let's just clear the uh, board here. Ooh, sorry. Lossly, lossy compression. So lossy compression is when you're trying to take the same information, like say a sound wave, and you're taking a complex piece of information and you're trying to store it again in a smaller kind of way, but you're trying to store it by creating a simplified version and you're creating a simplified version by throwing away data and you're losing data and hence why that's called lossy. So, you know, you're trying to approximate this beautiful curve using less points along the line. And so, you know, you can see we're losing information here. Now, this is a, a you know, basic approximation. And, you know, we can think of it the same way that we can think, you know, 0 0.95, let's, let's you know, there's too many digits, there's three digits. Let's just think of 0 0.95 as the number one. And of course, 0 0.95 is not one. It's not the same number. But, you know, maybe, maybe it's about the same. Maybe it doesn't really matter. So it depends on what you're doing. Okay, if you were to make a plane, uh, make an aeroplane, you were to design an aeroplane's wings using the approximation that one is, you know, the same as 0 0.95, you end up with a plane crash. You know, it's, it's not going to be a good result. But does it matter that much when we get to things like pictures or, or storing information like uh, audio files? So the kind of quantization error, and these are called quantization errors because uh, what this process of trying to approximate and give a number to a existing piece of information is, it's called quantization. And, sorry, and a quantization error, sorry, come right over here, a quantization error, a quantization error that you're very familiar with is uh, probably, you're probably most familiar with JPEG artifacting as a quantization error because JPEGs are a lossy file format used to describe a picture. So using my channel logo as an example, let's see what happens when we go through JPEG compression. So we'll zoom in right up to this curve here and we'll observe that with JPEG compression with high quality, 100 quality uh, JPEG compression, we have a nice smooth curve and it looks pretty much like the original information, even this close up. But let's say we dial up the JPEG compression. So we throw away more and more data to arrive at a simpler and simpler approximation. And you can see here instantly, this thing looks terrible. We have these big jagged edges because we're trying to describe the same complex curve using less and less information. For it. So we're using bigger and bigger blocks of pixels. So it looks really bad. And obviously you can tell the difference between the high quality JPEG version and the low quality. But let's say we zoom out. So we're gonna zoom all the way out. When we zoom all the way out, we can't actually see the differences. We can't see the differences because our monitor isn't high enough resolution. We can't see the differences because our eyes can't see the difference. So when we're zoomed out, 
the differences in kind of compression don't really make any difference in this example. And when we talk about uh, AAC or MP3 files, which are both our popular lossy file formats, we've known that in the past that we can actually hear quantization errors in low bit rate files. So it's just the same way we can see JPEG artifacts. We hear them as fuzz, we hear them as pre-echoes, we hear them as strange kind of ringing in a file because you know we're, we are losing data and we're arriving at kind of more of a jagged representation of the same kind of file. Now, obviously this kind of stuff is more complex than what I've described. Uh, lossy algorithms use really advanced techniques to deliver better approximations of the same pieces of information. And they're based on a lot of, you know, psychoacoustic research from very smart scientists uh, who have PhDs and etc. etc. So as we get more advanced uh, kind of codecs, we have better ways to mask quantization errors. And, and the most simple example of this is that uh, when you have a really loud passage of music, you can probably afford to throw away more data. You can probably af afford to kind of mask more quantization errors because it's so loud that perhaps the human ear can't actually discern the differences. So that's a basic example. Now, the file format MP3 was standardized in 1993, but the file format AAC, which is a higher quality, more advanced audio codec, uh, a more advanced compression algorithm was standardized in 1997. And AAC is actually considered uh, by the experts as transparent at 128 kilobits per second. And what transparent means is that it is indistinguishable from the original source. Now, 128K AAC is actually less than what you get, uh, you know, files from iTunes, for instance. Uh, and Apple actually pushes the AAC format quite aggressively. So uh, AAC uh, is 256K from iTunes. So if AAC is considered indistinguishable at 128K, it's gonna be more indistinguishable at 256K. So when we ask about a lossy versus the lossless file formats, uh, of course, it's, it's, it's very easy to say that, yeah, of course, of course, the lossy is not as good as lossless because you're throwing away data. And it's true, you are going to throw away data and you're going to introduce more errors and more noise. But the question is, can your human ear actually hear this noise the same way can your human eye see kind of the JPEG artifacts? And this is a terrible drawing of, you know, someone's ear here. So can your, can your ear actually hear these differences when we have things like planes and trains and cars and we have, you know, we have the limits of physical materials in our headphones and we have things like electrical noise coming from our power lines and distortion introduced by our audio equipment, etc., etc. Could all these things kind of already be masking the quantization error? Is it already indistinguishable? Can you hear this noise? So the human ear is a very complex organ. But, you know, in the end, a lot of people can say that they can hear the differences between lossless and lossy files. They say, you know, uh, they can absolutely hear the difference and MP3 files are garbage and, and poo-poo to the whole idea of lossy uh, audio formats, you know. But we have a problem because we can't actually determine these differences between these files uh, in a fair way. Generally speaking, if you know what the difference is between the lossy and the lossless file, and you know which one is the lossless file, and you know which one is the lossy file, you're going to tend to make up the differences. And we have a whole set of cognitive biases that kind of make us Kind of hear things that aren't there and and these differences are all sorts of things they there are things like placebo effects where we're going to hear things that aren't there because we're told that we should be able to hear them uh, we have things like confirmation biases where we have a tendency to favor information that confirms your belief so you know if you manage to guess correctly that an audio file is lossless or lossy you kind of go oh well, i knew that because i can hear the difference 
And we have social biases, so we have herd behavior uh, of, of people kind of saying, you know, lossy files suck and Beats headphones suck and that kind of thing. So we kind of agree with what other people say. So we have all these kind of cognitive biases that make it really hard for us to actually be able to fairly determine the differences when we hear a lossless versus a lossy file. So in the next part of this video, I'm going to show you a scientific method that we can use to defeat those biases and kind of judge for ourselves the differences between a, say, a lossy or lossless file, or even if we wanted to hear the differences between 96 kilohertz and 48 kilohertz audio files, etc, etc. A kind of standardized method for us to determine these differences in a fair way. Anyway, so we're going to jump to the next video. Uh, please click the like button if you found this video interesting and leave some comments and let me know what you think so far and share it with your friends. And uh, I'll see you at the next video.